So over the last two days, we have talked about the impact that capitalism has had uh, on the businesses and how businesses have responded. Um, today, what our focus is going to be on is the rise of the labor movement. Um, and as it says here, with increasing power and the influence of businesses, workers felt the need to kind of band together and demand better working conditions. Um, when we talk about this, we, we oftentimes think about, you know, you guys bringing change into a school setting. Um, you guys are wanting to, you know, even something as simple as wanting to um, uh, change the, the due date for a test or an assignment or whatever. Um, is it better for a single person to come up, up to me and say, hey, Mr. Eller, we need to have this changed, or is it better for an entire group of people to come together? Um, so what we have found is obviously when, when a group of people kind of band together, um, we get a little bit more done. Uh, there's a little bit more um, emphasis or power behind the voice of many as opposed to the voice of one. Um, so labor movement really begins after the, the monopolies have kind of taken some of their control. Um, many of you have had experience with labor, labor unions. Uh, if you work at Kroger, you are all a part of a labor union. Uh, and, and obviously if that labor union decides that they're going to go on strike, then the entire union goes on strike. Uh, but this is really the time period that all of this begins. Uh, and that's what we're looking at is really some of the first unions that were implemented in the United States and some of the reasons for them. In looking at this side, I only want you to pay attention to, and if you can in your notes, um, some of the, the just the, the bold terms here, the bold phrases. I'd like for you to really understand those as we move forward. There were three types of unions. Um, first, there was the Knights of Labor, the Order of the Knights of Labor. This was a much more inclusive union uh, in the fact that it allowed women and African Americans, as you can see very early on, Many of our labor unions were rejecting African-Americans and uh, women and were only focusing on whites. Um, however, the Knights of Labor were supporting things like an eight hour workday, equal pay, arbitration. Um, arbitration just simply means that a third party is going to come in. So if you have party A being your workers and party B being your owners, um, a third party who is not a part of that company is going to come in and they are going to say, you know, this is what we think should happen based on what A and B are telling us. Um, if any of you are familiar with with uh, Major League Baseball, there's a uh, arbitration process uh, that, that players can go through. So if a particular player uh, feels that they deserve $10 million, but the ownership wants to give them uh, $5 million, they can go to arbitration and a third party is going to look at the statistics of that player and say, well, you don't deserve 10, but you don't deserve five. We think you deserve seven and a half million. And then that would be their pay for the year. So that was just one of the things that the Knights of Labor were really focusing on. Um, I, I don't ask that you know the Knights of Labor in particular. I'm going to ask you to focus on two other ones uh, because eventually the Knights of Labor is going to go under and fold. But I do want you to see that there was a varying degree of acceptance among their members and some labor unions were much more accepting than others. What labor unions are ultimately working for is a term that we call collective bargaining. Uh, and that is where you start to negotiate higher wages, uh, better conditions or shorter hours. And we're going to talk about this one a little bit more when we talk about current day labor issues. Uh, and we'll talk about some sports examples and some companies today that are dealing with collective bargaining. Um, but collective bargaining is where a group of people kind of meet together and they, they, they uh, vote on or elect somebody to speak on their behalf. And that person goes and they talk directly to the ownership or the representative of the ownership. And they try to uh, negotiate whether it be their higher wages or their conditions or their hours and say, these are the things that we want. Um, so as I said before, the example would be if you are looking to have a test changed, um, you want the date to be moved to a week later because you have uh, five or six other tests that you're dealing with. Um, you could ask somebody uh, to come and speak to me and, and on that and, and you would say, hey, we want to see this test moved next Friday, not this Friday. Um, and that person could come to me and speak. They are they are bargaining uh, with the, the, the wishes of everybody. Uh, so they're collectively bargaining with the ownership. And what we have found is that the more power that goes to, the more membership that goes to the unions, 
there is more or an increase in political power as well. Um, and it's kind of one of those like the squeaky wheel gets the grease uh, where there are more people trying to make a change in either politics or in, in everyday life means that there are going to be more people uh, that are going to have their voices heard. So um, thinking about it in that context uh, that we've been using in this kind of example here, if it's one class that comes to me and says, I want to get this test changed next Friday, um, I could listen. It's one class that's willing to do it. Um, you know, I can change my schedule around for one group of people. If all three of my U.S. history classes come to me, I'm going to be much more likely to um, to to listen to the, the wishes of everybody. Uh, and then ultimately, really, if the entire junior class were to come to the U.S. history teachers and say, look, we're not taking this test without X, Y and Z being met, uh, there's a very good chance that we're going to have some sort of negotiation there. So, um, you know, the increased membership and the, the increased unity amongst everybody can lead to increased political power. The first type of union that I want you to know is the American Federation of Labor. Uh, and the American Federation of Labor was different in that it did not uh, include women, it did not include African Americans, and it was much more specific to those skilled laborers. So when we talk about skilled laborers, we're talking about welders, we're talking about plumbers today, uh, somebody that has a specific skill that is often um, developed through the trades. So some of you that are in, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I want V school. Uh, those of you that are in V school, you are developing a trade. Uh, and that's one of the things that would be protected. Now, these people would want to be protected more because they have a skill that not everybody can do. Um, you know, auto tech, you don't want me touching a car, uh, but I can uh, mow grass. Um, there's not really a skill in running a lawnmower, but there is a skill in working with an engine. Um, so there, you need to, according to the AFL, the American Federation of Labor, you're going to want to protect the skilled laborers. And what they will do is they will strike for higher wages and a shorter work week um, to try and get rid of some of those 80 hour work weeks or their, their low pay. Um, the second one, is Eugene Debs, uh, and, and I just really want you to know his name. I don't care that you know about the American Railway Union. Um, just understand that he was somebody that was very influential in trying to use strikes as a tactic uh, for gaining some sort of support. So walk out, uh, and I always talk about this with, with students as well in person, and I cautiously say this, uh, but if you are a uh, student and you're really tired about something that's going on at school, you're fed up, you just want it to be to be over and changed. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can do that. Number one, you can ask for assistance and ask for help. Oftentimes that doesn't happen. Um, you know, what's the other way to do it? Have all 2000 students get up out of the building and walk out. If 2000 students walk out of the building, um, I can't teach, administrators can't make me teach because I literally have nobody in the classroom. So um, Eugene Debs started to kind of develop this idea of using strikes to get what they wanted. If that's fine, if you're not gonna give us higher pay, well, you're not, we're not gonna get any pay because we're walking out and you're not gonna make any money because we're not making your product either. The last union that I want you to pay attention to is the IWW. And this one was one of the more radical unions uh, that was developed. Um, and basically they were an advocate for socialism. You know, very early on in this unit, we talked about capitalism and socialism and, um, these labor activists wanted complete government control of business. They wanted government to dictate how much and when a business could operate. They wanted government to dictate the equal distribution of wages. So if a profit was made by the company, it wasn't the CEO or the owner of the company that was making most of the money. They were taking that profit and equally dividing it amongst everybody in the company. Um, we can go back and talk about the pros and cons some other time because that was something that we covered earlier in the year. Um, but this one was very radical. Uh, it did include African Americans, so it was a little bit more accepting of other people. But ultimately, this one is going to fail because it is so radical. Um, and, and because the ideas were so 
out of the ordinary for the day, eventually it went to the IWW folding. And really everybody now is almost, almost everybody is under the umbrella of the American Federation of Labor. So this one out of the three is still around today, the American Federation of Labor. And it has a bunch of different labor unions underneath it that are um, uh, under their umbrella and under their control. That is it for today's lecture. Um, if I were you, I would try to make some sort of graph uh, comparing and contrasting the three labor unions because that is information that you're going to want, especially for your short answer at the end of this portion of the unit. Um, so whether it's organizing that in your notes, doing it on a sheet of paper, um, I, can, I can look at some of those as we check in on Wednesdays. Um, but do understand the difference between those three or those two unions in particular, the AFL, excuse me, and the IWW. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. I would be more than happy to help. Thank you.